Wet dry filters, they are simply the best. Initially innovated over 35 years ago, these units were modeled after the trusted public wastewater treatment trickle filters, which are still proving today to be the most reliable bioremediation equipment. It is important to know that they were specifically designed for reef tanks, but also successfully utilized by marine, brackish, and freshwater enthusiasts around the globe. The following demonstration shows the simplistic structure and identifies all of the key components necessary to fulfill a healthy, self-sustainable nitrogen cycle. This in turn will allow you to fill your display aquarium with an abundant variety of aquatic life requiring only minimal maintenance. In an effort to keep this demonstration short, we will review only the basics yet indicate areas of specific interest that will require further analysis. So stick around. YouTube links to these educational areas of interest will be listed at the end of this video. Wet Dry Filters Part 1 In this segment, we will discuss the first component, which is a surface skimming pre-filter assembly. To begin, the pre-filter is a box which hangs outside of the aquarium on the rim, usually resting on the back behind the aquarium where it remains unseen yet still accessible. Widely referred by many as an overflow box, its primary function is to mechanically filter out waste solids. A surface skimmer box has a grid of small teeth on top designed to filter out large debris like sticks and leaves, also preventing curious livestock from entering the bioremediation unit. Its primary purpose is to skim ammonia, proteins, as they condense and float to the aquarium surface. When attached, it is adjustable to function as a weir regulating the water level in the aquarium. The Aqualink ADP pre-filter's unique design incorporates a small, easily accessible mechanical filter pad made of 20 pores per inch foam that rests on a sieve tray. This particular design is adaptable to accommodate alternate forms of mechanical filtration such as a slotted standpipe and a foam cylinder. However, the advantage of using a pad style completely covers the affluent area which muffles drainage noise. It also allows the use of optional accessories like a micron filter sock, carbon packets, and a drain silencer. A U-shaped tube connects forming a path permitting a siphon to transfer water out from the aquarium to the pre-filter unit flowing into a heavy sediment compartment. A flexible drain hose is attached, connecting the main wet-dry filter unit below. For water to circulate, a return line is necessary. It should consist of a vinyl hose, flow control valve, and a J-shaped return tube. This tube should be formed of a single 180-degree bend that will attach to the rim of the aquarium. The 180-degree bend is preferred because it will not restrict the water pump's flow output like two 90-degree bends would. Finally, attach a duckbill diffuser tip, which will fan out a broad array of water for complete circulation. The diffuser should be attached to an adjustable fitting so it can be redirected as desired or toward a potentially problematic area. A water pump from the wet-dry unit below is powered on. When the valve is open, the water spills into the skimmer box. A manual siphon must be initiated to acquire complete circulation. The water then rises to flow over another weir, which directs the water into a distinct compartment for second stage mechanical filtration. The water flows through the foam pad into a third compartment. Here, the water falls freely, spilling into a small pool at the bottom that agitates a mix of oxygen into untreated water. The aerated wastewater then exits the pre-filter through a bulkhead into a flexible drain hose and directed to the wet-dry reactor bioremediation treatment. When animals are added, organic and inorganic protein and ammonia being thicker and lighter than water concentrate and float to the aquarium surface. Then the circulation skims these microscopic compounds to the surface through the pre-filter assembly into the flexible drain hose routing the water to the main wet-dry unit for biological treatment. The second component of a wet-dry is the bioreactor unit. 
Usually fabricated of acrylic, if properly engineered, it will contain multiple compartments that house different types of media, strategically positioned to maximize growth for the various forms of bacteria. These bacteria are necessary to consume the microscopic organics produced by the aquarium inhabitants. In turn, such a device will support a perpetual nitrogen cycle in the appropriate order. The size of this unit should contain multiple large chambers to hold biomedia substrates with a surface area in excess of that needed for the aquarium inhabitants. In addition, a sediment compartment is necessary to separate inert biosolids, otherwise referred to as detritus, which is produced by the bacteria sloughing. A stump reservoir should be large enough to contain three quarters of an inch of runoff from the aquarium in the event of a water pump shutdown for maintenance or an electrical power failure. The dimensions should fit and maximize the usable space available in the aquarium stand it is rated for. The shape should allow easy access to all compartments, especially the sump. This includes peripheral components like ion exchange canisters, protein skimmers, etc. The inserts consist of a lower tray durable enough to support a secondary biomedia substrate. An upper tray durable enough to support a primary biomedia substrate. A chamber lid vented for air circulation with an effective form of water distribution, preferably a rotating sprayer bar. For further information on sprayer bars, please review Aqualink ADP video, Drip Plate versus Rotating Sprayer Bar. Moving on, a drain hose connects the pre-filter above to the vented filter lid. When the filter is completely filled, you will notice that the primary biosubstrate remains exposed to open air above the water. A water pump should be installed, either external or submersible, with a return line hose attached to the pump to pump water from the filter sump to the aquarium and circulate with untreated aquarium water. This causes the sump reservoir to retreat, completely exposing the primary biomedia to open air. Please take notice that the secondary biomedia is intentionally positioned to remain completely submerged, being deprived of oxygen during operation. The order, placement, and types of biomedia utilized are paramount to the level of success the filter will achieve. For further information on biomedia, please review Aqualink ADP video, Best Aquarium Filter Biomedia. Moving on, water rich with organics is skimmed from the surface of the aquarium through a pre-filter that mechanically removes free-floating debris and aerates the water prior to flowing to the biofilter. Gravity forces the water into a sprayer bar. The water is then pushed through holes in the sides of the spray bar ports, creating small jets of spray, which causes the bar to rotate in a circular pattern. This pattern effectively distributes layers of untreated water that covers the entire media. Each cycle creates a wet layer of water that is followed by a dry layer of air between rotations, allowing bacteria on the biomedia to get a breath of the necessary oxygen. This concept is referred to as dosing. It is how the unit has earned the name wet-dry filter. Since the biomedia is encased, an air pump should be used to enhance oxygen levels and push out unwanted gases created by the bacteria's digestive process. This process promotes optimal conditions for aerobic bacteria growth, nitrosomonas, on the upper primary substrate, and anaerobic bacteria, nitrobacter on the lower secondary substrate. The sump section is a central access point to install and maintain peripheral equipment. It consists of a lower and upper sections. Most all maintenance will be performed here. Some brands are squared off, limiting access, but a smart chassis style as seen here trims off the upper portion shape allowing unrestricted access to the lower reservoir section when the unit is placed inside of an aquarium stand. A properly designed wet drive unit will incorporate a chamber for the installation of a submersible water heater. Here all water will pass directly over the heater being much more efficient. A manifold can tap into the water return line to supply installed optional accessories like chemical reactors, dosing canisters, and protein skimmers.
or other peripheral equipment like UV sterilizers, all of which will require drainage into a sump. All of the necessary equipment neatly tucked away, quietly operating behind the closed doors of an aquarium stand. Wrapping up, the end result is an efficient ecosystem capable of covering all forms of filtration and bioremediation that will fulfill the complete nitrogen cycle, allowing you to design your own aquascape without unsightly equipment. Although it seems simplistic, a wet-dry filter is not just a box containing bioballs. As demonstrated, it must contain a functional order between all necessary components. A skimmer box removes concentrated ammonia from the aquarium surface. Water is then transferred to the pre-filter where debris is mechanically removed and aerated. Toxins are then converted to non-toxic substances by bacteria in both aerobic and anaerobic processes within the main wet-dry unit. Finally, water enriched with necessary nutrients can then be heated and returned to the aquarium. In essence, a properly designed system that is correctly assembled will ensure every Aquarius that wet dry filters are the best option for aquarium filtration for any water type. To learn more, subscribe to our channel, please like this video, and feel welcome to view the following links that will clarify some of the most commonly asked questions regarding wet dry filters.